Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently down 0.46% to 47047. Ethereum up 0.73% to 3396. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. Thank you for being a part of our globally extended family. I appreciate you being here. If you're going through a life pullback at the moment, our love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. There's always hope and the sun will come out again. We have such a beautiful community and I just want to reach out and thank everyone for their very kind comments and one especially from Art. And I thought this really encapsulated what we were about as a globally extended family. The thing I like most about Ken and this community is that we focus, <laughs> is that the focus isn't on the money we make. That's really the easiest part. What makes us tick is the math, the charts, the market, the real wealth, and the love of what we are doing and how it will affect those who are close to us. Sure, the money is great because it gives us freedom. But when you understand that the amount of money you make is just a function of all the other things you do first, then the money is secondary to all those other things. This is really, really insightful. Money is always the end result of a successful application of rules. And as soon as you learn those rules, you will be successful. There's just no doubt about it. The only thing that stands between you and success are successful rules, understanding them and then knowing how to apply them. I love these comments as well from I've Got an Itch. What a great name. Thanks everyone and Ken for making myself and everyone feel so welcome. That's what we do inside the community. Everybody is welcome. We don't have fights. We don't have arguments. We don't have anything like that. We are in abundance and we just treat each other accordingly and the meditative mindset who would ever have thought that a crypto community could be this kind caring and supporting of each other it's just one of the numerous comments that you will see on our channel and for all the people that reached out and said hi for the first time that's just absolutely so beautiful please keep doing that make yourself known you're amongst friends I've also left a lot of helpful links in the description of each video. You just click the show more and you'll see all of those links in there. They can help you out tremendously. That's why I put them in. A lot of people are getting concerned that the market may be overheated and about to pop into recessionary mode. They talk about yield curve inversion and there's a lot of things we need to understand about that and I'll go through them a little bit later on. One of the things is when we look at the stock market and the bond market globally these two markets have different focuses. The stock market is risk on. It's got much much better returns than the bond market. When things get risky money transfers from the stock market into the bond market and we see bond prices go up and bond yields go down. When we look at the cryptocurrency market, that is the most highly speculative market on the planet because it represents the birth, literally, of the Web 3.0, which is the Internet of Value. It's been around quite a while, but it's just hitting mainstream awareness now. We're really, really early on the adoption phase, the adoption cycle. It's literally got decades and decades to run and it's the next essential upgrade to the internet and it's growing fast in terms of adoption, but we're really just at the start of it. We need to understand how the main markets are moving because if we don't know, we'll get shaken out of our positions. When we talked about the VIX, and the VIX is the fear gauge of the main stock market. 
We need to look at this because there's a lot of correlation, directional correlation between Bitcoin's price. You can see that in blue and the NASDAQ 100. For example, you see the NASDAQ starting to turn over. We're getting a slight turn over in Bitcoin as well. This is absolutely predictable. We've said this yesterday and a couple of days before. We would expect this because the fear has virtually come out of the market completely. We expect a tick up. When fear comes out of the market, optimism returns and prices go up. When fear comes back into the market, and the fear here is just that the market has extended too far too quickly and it needs to come down to a level of support this is just normal price is always moving in a wave it doesn't mean the markets are crashing but there is no shortage of people out there with doom and gloom and generally they have it for a reason maybe they're trying to sell some kind of service or something like that that tends to be the reason that they tend to terrify people but if you look at the back data you can actually make your own conclusions when you have the knowledge. We can see fear is starting to come up. We could see fear come up to around 25, which would be completely normal. And that would cause the NASDAQ to fall probably around to 14,300. If that occurs, that's absolutely normal stuff. We're looking at a repair here. So we would expect prices in the main market to keep on going up. We're not looking at any particular collapse of the market. And then when we look at bond prices, we can see they've just sold off too greatly. They have to do a technical bounce. We can see the same, the inversion with bond yields. And bond prices and bond yields move inversely. We can see that gold has come up. Again, this is just all normal stuff, and gold is very much linked to the DXY. You can see the DXY has come down. Oil has also bounced. It's done a technical bounce. I've said many times that oil is in an uptrend. You can see it quite clearly through the support, and inflation has come down. This is a really good thing. Overall, the markets are just exhibiting healthy price action. Nothing to be concerned about. But quite a few people recently have reached out and talked about yield curve inversion. The logic is that when you take the 10-year treasuries and the minus the two-year treasuries, if you get a curve that is the resultant factor of those two things, if it goes down towards zero and then it turns negative, we get inversion. But there's a big, big problem with the 10 minus the two-year, a huge problem. It's just not correct. Professor Emeritus of Economics, Arturo Estrella, actually in 1988 to 89, he developed a model which has correctly forecasted the last three US recessions <laughs> with no false positives. And he doesn't use the 10 year minus the two year. What does he use? He uses the 10 year minus the three month. And it's a huge, huge difference. Arturo knows what he's talking about. The 10 year minus the two year is widely used. It's called the Wall Street Traders yield curve inversion, but it's very, very inaccurate and it can scare people out. Have a look at the 10 year minus the three month. This is Arturo's version, the one that predicts recessions with no false positives. What is the curve doing? It's going up. It's not inverting. Here's zero down here. It's not inverting at all. And this is the problem with statistics. People can misrepresent statistics either knowingly or unknowingly. Sometimes people are just unknowing in what they do because they haven't done the research. When I lectured first and second year statistics, I saw so many times well-meaning people just not doing the research and putting the wrong analysis up and it can mislead people. The right analysis is the 10 year minus the three month. And there's a lot of reasons for it. I discussed this in the masterclass in living video 13 LV 13. You have to be really careful of what you take as fact always do the research and it's really hard when people are starting because they simply don't know there are four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth 
in zone one and zone two, people just don't know the rules of the market. They just look at what's presented and they say, oh, that makes sense. And sometimes it's just not right, such as the 10 year minus the two year. It is really, really widely used. But coming from an academic background, I really do my research and I look at these particular graphs and charts and I want to find the absolute best one, the most predictable one. The 10 minus the two is not predictable. The 10 minus the three month is the gold standard. Oh, the Bitcoin standard. There's a lot of anxiety and stress inside zone one, the panic zone, and zone two, the blame zone. And this is all about certainty. When people actually take it upon themselves to learn the rules of the market, to have patience, to move from certainty into probability, to understand how all the market dynamics work, it's a different ball game. You're actually using the rules correctly and you will be successful. That is it. In life, you just have to get the right rules. There are rules for relationships. There's rules for money. There's rules for work. There's rules for friendship. Unfortunately, most of those rules are unwritten and unknown, and it takes a long, long time to figure them out. What Art was saying in that particular quote right at the front of the video was that we focus on doing the right thing. We focus on real wealth and this allows us to keep the money that we earn. But it's not just about money. There's a massive difference between being rich, which is having a lot of money, and being wealthy, which is enjoying your life. And the difference is so stark. Many people who are rich will lose their money because they don't have all these other boxes. They've certainly gone after money. That's become their master. And they, with that, money as a master is a very, very terrible master. You never want that. You want to just execute the rules. That will naturally lead you to success and a good life. What we do inside our community, and one of the reasons why our community is so different to other communities, is we seek to maintain a positive excellence life trend, one of integrity and decency, kindness, inner and outer peace. This is really interesting. Inner and outer peace. How does this relate to investing? How does it relate to trading? A lot of people think, well, it's got nothing to do with trading. I just need to know when to buy and when to sell. The truth is, if you are in internal or external conflict, you will not invest effectively or trade effectively. It's just how the world works. And a lot of people say, what about persistence, commitment? Ugh, I don't want those things. I just want to make, you know, $10,000 in one minute by doing nothing and not understanding anything and just putting my money down like a casino. Well, it'd be nice if it worked that way, but we all need persistence and commitment. Without that, you cannot progress. If you're not persistently committed to your work, you will fail at your work sooner or later. If you're not persistently committed to your relationships, they will decrease in power and strength. If you're not persistently committed to your knowledge, it's really, really difficult to learn. Persistence and commitment are very, very important, and they're much, much more important than money. With persistence and commitment, you can actually make money. Money is always an end result, never an input, always an output. So what's happening with the crypto market? What is Bitcoin up to? Bitcoin is currently trading at 47,129. We've seen it come up to this particular level at 47,650. And it's been bumping around there, trying to figure out how it's going to get above that. But let's dig a little bit more deeply. We know what the US market is doing. We know the fear is starting to bounce. The NASDAQ is starting to come down. Gold is starting to go up. Oil is starting to go up. Yields are starting to come down. Bond prices are starting to go up. We're like a detective. We need all these facts to successfully apply the rules of investing and trading. Now, let's overlay the NASDAQ 100 with Bitcoin. What do we see here? The NASDAQ is starting to come down. What is the directional correlation 
between Bitcoin and the NASDAQ? Please let me know in the comments. Is it reasonably good? Is it tight or is it so loose that it's just not predictive at all? And what are the shorts doing? When we see short spiking up, generally this accompanies downward price momentum. We saw the price of the shorts spiking up and the price just wavering a little bit, but it's kind of come down. I wonder what the longs are up to. Egad, what are the longs doing? They're like literally falling out of the market. What does this mean to you? And this is really important. I can tell you what it means, but if you try to understand what it means, that's way more important. When I was teaching first and second year statistics, I just used the numbers one, two, three, four, five to help the students get through all the different levels of statistics. And some of them can be quite challenging, but when you have easy examples, it makes sense. What does the long actually represent? This is people coming into the market saying the price will go up. What do you think it means when the longs just escape out of the market like this? Please let me know what you think in the comments. And there are no wrong answers. As a learning based community, we're all about supporting each other. It's a safe place. Pretty interesting stuff with the dynamic changes between the longs and the shorts. And I was mentioning the shorts would probably get an uptick. And I mentioned, I mentioned that yesterday in yesterday's video. And we saw the longs starting to come down. They've really, really come down hard. 24 hour liquidations are 215.53 million across 70,274 positions. When we look at the past 24 hours, we can see that around 55% of liquidations are long liquidations, about half and half. And we can see that here in this particular chart. We were seeing a lot of short liquidations. We're seeing less short liquidations and it's starting to balance out with the longs. I believe that we can expect more shorts to enter the market and actually more long liquidations to result. That's my prediction. Let's see what happens. When we look at Bitcoin, what do we see here? Bitcoin is getting above a resistance level and that's really good, but it's under another resistance level. It's had a really, really good wave up. And when we look at fear and greed, we can see the fear and greed. Optimism is returning into the market. Does this mean that, for example, Bitcoin could just shoot up maybe 68,000 by the end of next week? Absolutely, it could mean that. Could it mean that Bitcoin could come down to 36,000? Yes, it could also mean that. What you need to do is basically throw the idea of certainty out the window. And the way to do that, this is one of the rules that you must, must obey in the crypto market. Indeed, all markets, it's really, really important. What you need to do is just be like a detective. Just collect your evidence. What do we see? The VIX, the fear gauge is starting to bounce upwards. The NASDAQ is starting to curl over. We've seen the association between the two. We know gold is starting to come up which is geopolitical concern. We can see the DXY starting to come down. We can see a lot of things, but the issue is how does that interplay with the crypto market? When things get to a certain level of fear or greed, they tend to move always in a wave. And when we move in a way, for example, a probabilistic thing would be to move down towards 42, 43. That would be fantastic. That would be incredibly healthy and form a higher low. And this is what markets do. They're always moving up and down. For example, at a time like this, many people looked, oh, look at this. Everything is getting optimistic. Everything is fantastic. Well, let's go all in and more. Oh, gosh, what happened? This is markets. This is what markets do. And if you understand this, you won't get FOMO'd into something like this. You'll just say, yeah, OK, well, I've seen it before and I'm going to see it again. Price is always moving in a wave. It's like this. So many people went all in and more when we had a big uptick like this. What happened the next day? 
bang, came down. This is what you want to always keep in mind. There's a very, very important rule for you. That's rule number four. Price moves in waves. A lot of people have said this particular rule, this one rule, has just given them so much peace of mind to understand how markets actually work. And people don't share these rules. And it's such a shame. What about yield curve inversion? Oh, everybody's talking about the 10 minus 2. We know that the 10 minus 2 is not the predictive one. It's the 10 minus 3. Arturo, in his many, many interviews on various news stations, he talks about the 10 minus 2. He tells and informs people that it is not predictive. Not predictive like the 10 minus 3 months. And there's many reasons why that is the case. We're not seeing anything close to inversion on the 10 year minus three months, nothing of the sort. But the 10 minus two looks like a roller coaster direct to hell. I mean, look at this. Ow, this, she's going down, baby. When people want to terrify you, they'll show you the 10 minus two year. But when people want to help you, they'll show you the 10 minus the three month. Let's have a look at some top cryptos. What we see with Bitcoin, it's moving in a wave. And this is what always happens. We're getting really, really extended like back here. But we have a very, very good upward support around the 40,000. The concept is that Bitcoin is incredibly volatile. And if we get a lot of fear into the market, we could have spikes down to these lower levels. The more probable scenario is around 42,000 if we get a pullback. And I say if, because it is probable, but the markets really like to pull the rug under certainty. That's why we always make in advance probabilistic choices. What do we do if, for example, price rallies? And we look at Bitcoin because we know that no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Basically, Bitcoin just pushes the other alts around, either upwards or downwards, in the direction of its own gravity. Sometimes you get about 1% of the alts that escape that gravity, and they're really fascinating to identify and look at. They can give some really good keys. But just keep this in mind. If you want the price to go up, what will you do if it goes down or it goes sideways? You need to have answers to those questions. All professionals do. And that raises a really, really important question. What we do inside our community is smart money thinking. It's not retail thinking. Retail thinking is zone one and zone two thinking. It's all about hype and it's about fear and about being addicted to the news. We actually look past the news to the actual charts of what drives the news. We go to the source. And people that have been looking at or, or in our community for a very, very long time know I always go to the source. It's about probability and rules. Probability is not certainty. If you want a 100% chance of something, <laughs> that's a certainty. And if anything less than 100%, that's a probability. So when we look at all the factors, the NASDAQ starting to come down, the fear starting to go up, gold starting to go up, bond prices starting to recover, all of those things, the shorts, the longs, all of the little pieces of information that we actually collect as professionals and always view yourself as a professional. Professionals are absolutely dedicated to their craft. It's likely, it's probable that we will get a wave down, but it's also equally likely, and we've looked at the yield curve inversion and gone, yeah, not happening. And we can see from many other factors that the markets are looking actually quite healthy, but a lot of people think that they're not because they get caught in zone one and zone two thinking. For example, when price comes down really, really heavily, that's when our community goes to town. We're buying ferociously these falling knives. We love falling knives because we use the percentage in our favor. 
when you get for example a 50 percent decrease when price goes back up to that level that's not a 50 percent decrease i'm just giving you an idea but when it goes back up and recovers its original price it's a hundred percent increase that is what the institutions do retail is selling professionals are buying these spikes and it's the professionals that basically see the institutions see the concept don't buy the falling knife because they are one of the things that you'll find in the market things don't just happen overnight they don't happen instantly when people say there should be a wave down that doesn't mean today or doesn't mean tomorrow it could be next week and that's why we have to have that three-way decision making it's looking more and more probable but markets really really like to do things to us that we don't like basically that's all about rule 251 expect the unexpected remember a probability is not a certainty but the application of rules and probability and patience allows us to invest in trades to get into trades where the percentage moves in our direction doesn't move against us retail traders and investors and all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell the problem is that investing is all about hodling when people hold 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 hodl 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 hold on for dear life they're holding on through the peaks and through the troughs and you would really wonder isn't there a better way just to combine the capability of trading with the capability of holding is just fantastic there's no need to be an investor or a trader you can be both when i look at these charts i'm looking for something very very specific what i see here is that when cryptos tend to take off and this purple line is just a community line for the masterclass students when cryptos take off they have an angled support at one particular percentage and then will form a higher low for example around here and then we'll get a steeper support line that is what i call takeoff and that's what i'm looking for you can see with xrp you can see that takeoff there was a support line underneath but then it started taking off this is the gap this is the positive air that we're looking at we're looking for this when we get a retracement i'm going to go in pretty heavily on that of course not all in but just gradually buying at levels of support and it's not about picking tops or bottoms a lot of people say oh you know i really miss this particular bottom i could have bought it for thirty-two thousand, and i didn't buy it for the bottom so i'm out it's not like that when you're a professional you're just looking at getting these percentages to work in your favor and turning it over for a reasonable percentage because they can really really add up the best thing that could possibly happen to the market is a series of higher lows getting formed in these charts and if we see that that's really really good stuff that's what we want and you can see something interesting with luna luna is really really overextended it's starting to break its support lines it's starting to turn support into resistance just be aware of this of course luna is coming up to price discovery so it's a little bit of a different situation and there's been some good news in luna but i would just argue that this is a fairly overheated trade it doesn't mean that you can't do it i'm just really really risk averse i would look at something like that and say yeah it's a little bit hot for me i'll just wait till it cools down a bit another good thing to keep in mind is the impact of bitcoin's gravity we can see bitcoin starting to roll over that blue line in the background on each of these alts and we can see for dot dot is starting to roll over too it's got a bit of strength there doge has less strength but it's starting to roll over remember no alt can escape bitcoin's gravity shib is starting to roll over we've got some degree of power in matic at the moment sometimes matic does tend to move opposite to the market so keep that one in mind i would suggest you keep your eye on matic we can see cro 
definitely moving down with Bitcoin's gravity. This is a good thing to look for. Litecoin still moving up, not not really playing down with Bitcoin's gravity at the moment. It's, it's certainly moved down with it, but it's actually jumped back up. And then when we look at near, we can see it's turning over at the moment. I really like the look of Atom. It's got a ton of support below it. But remember these spikes. These spikes are really what you want to take advantage of. If you're an investor and you want to dollar cost average in to Atom, just average in at lower levels. That's all about rule five. You can always buy lower. A lot of people reach out to me and say, Ken, should I sell at a loss? I just want to focus on Ethereum Classic for you here. This is what crypto does. Crypto is incredibly volatile. It can move up and down by really staggering amounts. In a little over two weeks, Ethereum Classic actually moved up more than 100%. That's pretty substantial. And when you think about losing trades, you could have had, for example, Ethereum Classic down here and said, oh, this thing is not going anywhere. I'm going to sell. One thing that you might like to do, because crypto is so volatile, if you want to sell, and that is always completely your choice, experts do not know your needs. Even when people say, I don't need the money, we all need the money. So don't maybe, don't think so much like that. Think about what is the best knowledgeable thing to do. What is obeying the rules? If you look at the market, the market in totality is on its way to an upward progression in all probability. I know that there's always so many news outlets saying it's the end of the world. And generally those news outlets have a vested interest in that. Gold thrives on problems. It's a geopolitically sensitive material. And Bitcoin is in direct opposition to gold. Of course, a lot of people in gold don't want anything to do with Bitcoin unless they're forward thinking. So just bear that in mind. If you watch a precious metals channel, they're going to probably smash around Bitcoin and say it's going to one dollar or it's, it has no value at all. So just bear that in mind. But when it comes to actually selling, I would actually suggest that there's a rule that you don't sell at a loss unless there's a very, very, very good reason for it. It could be tax time and you want to offset your gains. That is a sensible reason to sell. If you're looking at volatility like what we're going through now, it appears from the probabilities that the market is turning around. That's a really good thing. We want to be involved in the market, but we just time ourselves. The other thing that you may like to keep your mind on is that we're really, really early in the adoption cycle of the Internet of Value. That's what crypto is. A lot of people don't understand crypto. They say, oh, it's like a currency. It's actually not. It's the ownership layer of Web 3.0. It's the next Internet. It will revolutionize the world just as the Internet did. It's the Internet of money. So long as you've actually purchased the crypto at spot, I never, never suggest that you purchase under leverage. If you use leverage, you're probably going to get your account wiped out sooner or later. So in that perspective, when it comes to actually selling at a loss, I really, really am against selling at a loss. You can call it accumulation trading. Accumulation, you buy on the way down and you're consistently buying, buying, buying when it sells off. You want to do that. That can actually lower your average buy price and it can turn a loser into a winner. And a lot of people say, never actually add to a losing trade. Who are those people? They're institutions. There's a lot of people that don't want you to know the truth about the market. We have, for example, in the masterclass, LRC. The LRC trade, the loop ring trade, which is in the masterclass, I showed how buying on the way down, especially these falling drops, actually yielded a very substantial profit. And a lot of members of the community did very, very well with LRC. The concept is that LRC came down 
over 83% from this peak to this peak at the bottom. When you think about that, if you're an investor and you're holding, hodling, just like this, if you're doing this with LRC, you're down over 80%. But if you're actually investing and trading and the trading component of you, the trading portfolio that you put aside, whatever that is, 10%, 20% of your portfolio, you're actually in and out of LRC. And we've made incredible gains in LRC, over 70%. So please bear this in mind. You can always do well in any market, but you have to swap between being an investor and a trader. Just combine the best of both. Many investors would say there's no way you can make money in LRC. It's come down 83%. But look at it from the bottom here. It rallied up 116%. And even if we were, for example, to take this level up to the top level, let's have a look at that. We can see that we're down 64.62% if we just manage to sell at that top. But that is really, really a significant loss. With a knowledge of how to trade, you just turn your fortunes around, literally. Crypto technical analysts have a very scientific approach to tracking investor attention. First of all, we mark up our charts through the CTKS method, which replaces candlestick pattern analysis. Then we collect those probabilities like what we did in the stock market, although we do a lot more than that. And then we look into the crypto market to find the market's focus, enhancing our pattern recognition, understanding that opportunities reset daily. And this is a really beautiful rule to understand. Opportunities do reset daily. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Today is a new day. Real wealth is a very, very important concept. This is here to actually fight self-doubt and self-sabotage and have a professional mindset and master your emotional control. You actually can get rid of anxiety and a lot of crippling things that will attack investors and traders if you change your mindset to one of wealth. Again, there's many, many rules involved in doing that. And then we buy and sell because you need all of this knowledge before you buy and sell. Many people don't have the persistence, the commitment, the dedication. They want to go straight here to buy and sell. When they do so, they're actually guaranteed to lose money. All things take time. You don't get a medical degree on your first lecture attendance. It doesn't work that way. You don't qualify yourself as a computer programmer if you just look at one YouTube video that goes for five minutes. It takes time. It takes time in everything. Always put in the time. Just go step by step. Build your knowledge strongly on strong foundations and you will do incredibly well. As promised in yesterday's video, I put this live chart in LV18. This is all about the top cryptos and how they move each day. I'll just give you an idea here. This is all about the percentage movements over seven days. And in the masterclass, I do a deep dive on how to understand these patterns and how to work with this particular chart. I hope it helps. Also, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude and appreciation to all the beautiful community members who've reached out and sent me their well wishes. I'll continue to do the video each day. That's my promise and I keep to my word. I'll be a little bit slow in responding to emails and messages. I just wanted to let you know I appreciate you all so very, very much. And a very special thank you to the CTKS ambassadors. You're just wonderful, wonderful people and I love how you look after the community. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video and also subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you in the community. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. And to the CTKS ambassadors for mentoring masterclass students. And of course, a very big thank you to you for watching and being part of our global KS family. If you would like daily updates, 
On price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the tax software I use and the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. Please use the link in the description to seek out an ambassador to get 80% off the Masterclass. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.